and I'm hitting the All right, perfect. And whenever you're ready, you can take it away. Okay. Awesome. Hello, Miss Horn. It's nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. I like your background. Oh, thank you. Yeah, all the 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 uh the treats and all the things that goes into being a <laughs> a, a 46 year old kid. <laughs> hey, enjoy your life. That's your life. <laughs> thank you. Uh, just let you know, I'm um I write for a Detroit publication, so a lot of this uh, is for Detroit. Um, the questions are from a Detroit slant and perspective. So, okay. Yeah, uh, don't worry about spoilers because nothing I'm writing will go into print until the whole season is over. So, oh, just okay. <laughs> so, first of all, yeah. um, tell us about Mabel. Just tell us about the character, introduction to the character. Well, Mabel Jones, she is a close friend of the Flannery family, especially Lucille, of course. Like, she's just one of them sisters is always at the house, bar in the pan, having tea, talking, talking shop. Mm -hmm. She's divorced, so she's new to the to the neighborhood. Um, very vivacious, a great storyteller, just loves to have fun. Mm -hmm. um, but she's, you know, a little lonely, a little lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Um, and was there any... Um... Any particular aspect about her character that made you want to take on a role or you found challenging? Yeah, you know, I she's this role is something I, like I haven't played, you know, and I'm typically I do a lot of doctor, lawyer or, or these days on Snowfall, like, you know, killing people for, you know, for money. <laughs> right. <laughs> but right. what I love what I loved about her was she I knew on the surface fans would just assume just um, would think home wrecker. Ugh that's it mm. and that was the challenge for me so even though that is a fact but I, I always ask why like what happened what what else is there about her so I mm. wanted to take that challenge on you know she's for me she's like a mix of like Jack A. Harry from 227 and like Wilona from Good Times like very you know fun and bubbly but there's more to meets the eye to her and I wanted to plant seeds of of what that story was you know as we find out she's you know, it's like hurt people hurt people. You know, she's been betrayed. She's been cheated on. You would think that would be the last thing she would do. But like hurt people do, they end up hurting people and doing the same thing. And that cycle keeps happening. So I thought it was interesting that we get to see her vulnerability later in the season where we see that she is in this struggle with herself, you know, mm -hmm. and where she wants, she wants to have quality female relationships, but she keeps messing it up. So that's like this internal battle within her that I thought was very interesting. Um, and was that a challenge for you at all? Because at the same time, you're playing someone who, to a certain degree, the audience is to, is supposed to find unlikable. But at oh, the yeah. same time, you you are putting, a, as you just spoke on, a humanity in her. You know, Correct. So that you know she's even though she's by far making some very reckless decisions. Uh, yeah, you still making her human. You know, she's flawed, but she's still a human being. Exactly. And yeah, and I, and I knew that. And then as we would shoot certain scenes, like episode five, six, you know, you know, <laughs> our executive producer, Heather, would be like, oh, Christine, oh, I don't know the fans. I don't know how the fans are going to feel about this. But to me, it's like, OK, that means I'm doing a very good job when I'm check, checking the comments and scrolling on Twitter and Instagram. And the fans are heated. They are in it. They're calling Mabel out. They're calling Charles out. Mm. I'm like, OK, I'm doing something right. And you know, it's like, I know who I am. This is, this is acting. And even if mm -hmm. sometimes the fans get those lines blurred, I'm content in the work that I've done. I've had a chance to watch the whole season now, and I feel very proud of the work that I did and excited to be able to tell this story and to bring this memorable character to the screen this season. Yeah, you did. I watched the whole season too, and you, uh, you did fabulous. Um, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have you had, you ever spent any time in Detroit uh, prior to this season? And if you have, uh, do you have any sort of experiences you can share? I have not spent any time in Detroit. I went to Detroit once years ago when I was doing a, a play um, mm -hmm. at the Fox um, and it was cold. And I remember men wearing beaver coats. Like that was, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, you know, because this character I didn't get to travel some a lot. There was a chunk of cast that did get to go to Detroit and, mm -hmm. and actually film there. So I got to, unfortunately I missed out on that. That's for, Hey, the beaver, beaver coats. That is, that is as valid of a memory as a memory gets. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fine. Like, oh. Right now. So a beaver <laughs> coat sounds good. 
Oh, I don't know how you do it. It's so okay. cold. It's deep. Ooh. Had they made you aware during um, filming that the Easy Rest Motel is an actual place that's known for? No. Yeah, the Easy Rest. That was, uh, you know. Is I, I it real? It. Yeah. And I guess that speaks to, to Randy as far as bringing a certain authenticity to the screen. Yes. But the Easy Rest is, um because I'm, I'm 46, grew up 80s and 90s, but that is a a, a motel known for that type of, um, let's just Activity. say, moral exchange. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you for telling me that. And you know, that doesn't surprise me. You know, Randy, when, before I even signed on, I met with him and Heather, you know, to, so I can understand where their the Mabel journey was going to go after my audition. And before I said yes. And one thing that really struck out, stuck out for me was Randy was like this, we are here to elevate. That was just the mm -hmm. word we're elevating. Every, we're elevating the right, the writing set, costume design, you know, we're pushing the envelope and I wanted to be a part of that. So you telling me a, a detail like that mm -hmm. doesn't surprise me because the writers are on top of it. I love that so much. Yeah, <laughs> not, vibrating not bed, no. <laughs> vibrating bed, no, that's why when I saw, uh, you know, it's the whole um, scene of the receipt for the jacket and then that's followed up you know ways later with the match, the match ride i'm like man they thought of everything you know? <laughs> <laughs> i love everything. it oh. classic. um oh. the other i remember um interviewing um the actor that played charles before the season started and you know he spoke a lot to the time period in which this takes place you know uh this is this is early 80s um detroit was going through a mild recession then oil prices was high, unemployment was high, you know, which, you know, impacted the character's household. And as he pointed out, you know, when there's no finance, that can impact intimacy. So um, oh. it does seem like Charles was right for Mabel's picking. He was, he was right for anybody. <laughs> Anybody's picking. Listen, <laughs> whether it was lady at the church, whether it was Mabel lady at the grocery store, it was about to go down. It was like literally like a bomb about to explode, really, with all the weight on his shoulders and the stress between he and Lucille. Mm -hmm. It absolutely, I mean, that's just, there was like, it was inevitable. And I just, it was like the light was on and Mabel just swooped mm -hmm. on in. She could see it clear as day. Got you. Okay, well, that concludes all I have. Um, I appreciate your time. I guess, again, I loved your performance all season. Um, Mabel was the character that we didn't know we needed in BMS. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, uh oh you froze okay you froze up thank you again Oh, hey, muted. no, I'm I'm good. Oh, I there did, you go. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I don't know if you heard the last thing I said, but I just said Mabel was the character we didn't know we needed. So I appreciate oh, it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Will do. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Connie. Thank you.